Forget electric cars, the future of transportation is electric buses, powered by the sun. In the heart of Africa, one man's vision is changing how we think about mobility. Maxwell Chikumbutso has built more than just a bus. He has created a prototype for a cleaner, greener future. This self-powered bus is not just a vehicle. It's a statement against pollution and fossil fuel dependency. At first glance, the bus looks like a modern electric vehicle, but its true genius lies beneath the surface. Instead of relying on conventional grid charging, Maxwell's bus integrates solar harvesting technology directly into its roof. This solar capability allows it to power itself without external input, which drastically reduces emissions over time. Africa, a continent often overlooked in technological revolutions, may now be at the center of a global transportation shift. The inspiration behind this innovation was simple. Reduce carbon emissions, lower costs, and make clean transport accessible to everyone. Maxwell believes that environmental responsibility should not be a luxury but a default standard. His team engineered the bus with cutting-edge lithium-silicon batteries that store energy with higher efficiency and longer cycle life. These batteries are integrated seamlessly with solar panel arrays that harvest sunlight throughout the day. Instead of idle waste while parked, the bus becomes a solar collector, turning every moment into energy capture. In dense cities like Harare or Lagos, where grid reliability is often shaky, this kind of autonomy is game-changing. But can it actually reduce Africa's transportation emissions? To answer that, we need to compare it directly with the continent's current transportation reality. Diesel minibuses and taxis dominate public transit in many African cities. These vehicles often run without catalytic converters and emit black smoke into already congested streets. A single diesel minibus emits over 10 tons of CO2 annually, not to mention particulate matter that causes respiratory issues. Multiply that by hundreds of thousands of vehicles, and the environmental cost becomes staggering. By contrast, Maxwell's bus produces zero tailpipe emissions. Even the solar panels produce minimal emissions over their life cycle when manufacturing is included. Every ride on this bus replaces a polluting alternative incrementally cleaning the urban atmosphere. But solar power is only part of the equation. The onboard energy management system uses AI to optimize power use depending on terrain, load, and weather conditions. This makes the bus incredibly efficient compared to traditional electric vehicles which rely entirely on grid charging. The reduction in charging demand also means fewer coal-powered energy inputs in regions still reliant on fossil electricity. Let's talk air quality. In cities like Nairobi, PM 2.5 levels regularly exceed safe thresholds due to traffic emissions. Widespread adoption of emission-free buses like Maxwell's could drastically lower these levels. This would reduce healthcare costs, absenteeism, and premature deaths linked to pollution. Additionally, there's noise pollution. Conventional buses and taxis generate significant engine noise in crowded areas. Maxwell's bus runs virtually silent, contributing to a more livable urban environment. What about energy security? Because it's solar-powered, the bus doesn't depend on fluctuating oil prices or fuel availability. It brings stable, predictable energy use to a continent where fuel logistics are often problematic. Another overlooked aspect is maintenance. Without internal combustion, there's no need for oil changes, spark plugs, or exhaust systems. This reduces waste generation and toxic material disposal common in traditional vehicles. And let's not forget road resilience. Diesel spills and fuel leaks damage roads and ecosystems. A clean energy bus eliminates these risks entirely. From a life cycle perspective, the solar bus's operational emissions are near zero. While some emissions occur during production, these are offset within months of active service. In fact, the average offset period is just under 18 months, after which it becomes net carbon negative. That's unheard of in the transit sector, especially in developing regions. We also must consider the benefit of decentralized transport energy. Each bus becomes an energy node, operating independently from unstable grids. This empowers transit systems in off-grid or poorly connected regions. Even in rural areas, where public transport is often inaccessible, Maxwell's model can function with minimal infrastructure. It brings mobility where there was none 
and does so cleanly. As a platform, this bus doesn't just carry passengers, it carries environmental reform. When passengers board, they become participants in a climate solution, not contributors to a crisis. But what happens at scale? If hundreds or thousands of these buses operate in tandem, the atmospheric impact could be monumental. A study modeling adoption in four African cities showed a projected CO2 reduction of 1.2 million tons per year by 2030. That's equivalent to planting nearly 30 million trees. It's not just theoretical. Pilot programs in Zimbabwe and South Africa are already demonstrating measurable air quality improvements. These pilot regions reported a 14% drop in roadside CO2 concentration during trial periods. On top of that, these buses are affordable to operate, reducing costs for governments and private operators. The cost savings can then be redirected to infrastructure, healthcare, or education. Even the materials chosen in the bus's construction reflect sustainability principles. Recycled aluminum and lightweight composites reduce the overall ecological footprint. This minimizes the energy required for production and transport of raw materials. Water use is also reduced during manufacturing by utilizing dry coating techniques for solar cell production. Each part of this bus tells a story of ecological thoughtfulness. Yet it's not a perfect story. We have to ask hard questions about the source of the batteries. Lithium, cobalt, and rare earth minerals come with environmental and ethical concerns. Many mines are located in countries with poor labor protections and environmental oversight. This brings us to the darker side of clean tech, resource extraction. How do we balance innovation with responsibility? Maxwell's team claims to source ethically and is pushing for recycled battery inputs wherever possible. They've partnered with recycling startups in Europe to establish closed loop systems. Still, battery production remains energy intensive. Even solar panels require mining of silicon, silver, and aluminum. These activities have their own carbon and water footprints. Furthermore, the panels themselves need eventual replacement and recycling. This opens questions about e-waste management and long-term sustainability. So while the bus is operationally green, it's not environmentally invisible. It represents a leap, not a landing. And yet, when compared to the environmental toll of fossil fuel vehicles, the equation is clear. The net benefit is significant, even if the process is not entirely flawless. A cleaner future will always carry complexity, but innovation must move forward, thoughtfully and with accountability. Maxwell's model acknowledges this tension. It doesn't claim to be perfect, but it aims to be responsible. This transparency builds trust and creates space for improvement. Moreover, the visibility of this bus creates awareness. People begin to question the status quo of transportation. Children see a bus that hums instead of roars and wonder why all buses aren't like that. Change begins with a question and Maxwell's design sparks thousands. In urban planning circles, this bus is already seen as a proof of concept, a scalable, replicable solution that integrates with local environments and energy systems. Even tourism benefits from a quieter, cleaner transportation system. Visitors are more likely to explore cities that don't suffocate them with exhaust. And for African cities vying for global investment, green transportation is a major plus. Environmental reputation now influences everything from trade agreements to tourism decisions. Maxwell's bus offers more than mobility, it offers image transformation. Africa becomes not the follower, but the leader in green transit innovation. This has global implications. By demonstrating success at home, African countries can export these models abroad. Other regions facing similar challenges like Southeast Asia or South America can adopt the blueprint. Thus, the ripple effect of Maxwell's work spreads beyond geography into ideology. It shows what's possible when innovation meets purpose. It suggests that being green isn't just for the wealthy global north. It's for everyone. It's for the future. It's for the air we all breathe. And it's just the beginning. The true measure of innovation isn't in prototypes. It's in persistence and real-world performance. Maxwell's next phase involves scaling the self-powered bus beyond pilot cities. This means integrating it into larger transport systems where complexity multiplies. 
as rollout increases, so do the environmental stakes, both in potential benefits and possible oversights. Let's look closer at one of the thorniest environmental challenges. Battery disposal. Batteries, even the most advanced ones, degrade over time and must be safely decommissioned. Improper disposal leads to leaching of toxic metals into soil and groundwater. To counter this, Maxwell's team is developing battery repurposing protocols. These protocols aim to extend battery life through second life applications in energy storage. Once no longer viable for transport, these batteries can still power rural microgrids. This dual life cycle reduces total environmental burden while increasing community energy access. Transforms a problem into a solution if done correctly. Another major concern is infrastructure compatibility. Most African cities lack dedicated lanes, smart grids, or solar integrated bus depots. For Maxwell's model to scale, cities must adapt. But this is not a weakness, it's an opportunity. Infrastructure investment creates jobs and enables circular economic growth. Local solar panel assembly, battery refurbishing centers, and AI diagnostics hubs can sprout alongside deployment. These new industries bring with them an environmental literacy previously missing in transport sectors. As citizens become stakeholders in green transit, a cultural shift begins. The bus becomes more than a machine, it becomes a teaching tool. Each stop, each ride, becomes a conversation about sustainability and future-forward design. School programs can be built around visits to solar depots and energy centers. Youth engagement will be essential in ensuring long-term adoption and stewardship. Additionally, community ownership models could boost ecological responsibility. Shared transit ownership can incentivize users to care more about upkeep and performance. This creates a feedback loop between user and technology, enhancing both ecological and social resilience. Maxwell's long-term vision includes a continent-wide charging and maintenance network. But unlike EV networks in the West, this one relies more on distributed solar microgrids. This eliminates the need for centralized fossil-based power inputs. It also bypasses many logistical bottlenecks common in developing energy markets. Such decentralization inherently favors environmental resilience. If one region suffers an outage, others can remain operational without major impact. This modularity also allows local customization to fit regional climates and resources. In drier areas, solar emphasis grows stronger. In wetter regions, hybrid models may incorporate kinetic or regenerative braking systems. Each configuration is tailored for efficiency and environmental harmony. Further benefits arise when these buses replace not just diesel vehicles, but short-haul airplane routes. Interregional flights are some of the most carbon-intensive per passenger mile. A quiet, zero-emission ground alternative becomes appealing, especially when cost-competitive. Governments can encourage this modal shift through policy incentives and transit zoning. This brings us to the role of policy and regulation. For Maxwell's bus to succeed environmentally, strong governance is key. Laws must be crafted to regulate battery recycling, mandate ethical sourcing, and standardize solar certifications. Without these, even the best technology can be misused or degraded. Fortunately, several African nations are already drafting green mobility frameworks. Maxwell's company is contributing technical expertise to help shape these policies. They understand that innovation must work with, not against, regulatory ecosystems. Environmental impact assessments are being made part of every new rollout. Third-party audits are encouraged to ensure transparency and trust. International organizations are watching closely. UN climate programs and global NGOs have expressed interest in supporting further development. This adds a layer of global accountability to local innovation. Carbon credits could even be generated from widespread adoption, providing new revenue streams. These funds could be reinvested into battery recycling programs and solar expansion. The environmental implications stretch far beyond the bus itself. Cleaner transport reduces oil dependency, which in turn reduces risks of oil spills and pipeline damage. It also lowers the heat island effect in cities, since electric buses generate less waste heat. Trees along routes survive longer, improving biodiversity in urban zones. 
Cleaner air means more pollinators survive, sustaining local agriculture. It's a cascading chain of environmental benefits. But we must not overlook the human element. Drivers of these new buses need training, not just technical but ecological. They become ambassadors of clean technology on wheels. Each ride is a lesson in what's possible when sustainability is prioritized. Passengers, too, must be educated on how this change improves their health and futures. Public awareness campaigns can showcase the environmental gains of every kilometer traveled. Data dashboards at bus stops could show CO2 saved, kilowatt hour harvested, and emissions avoided. Real-time transparency builds public trust and drives engagement. Digital apps could let users track environmental metrics of their journeys. This gamifies sustainability and rewards eco-conscious commuting. What about manufacturing? The facilities producing these buses must also meet environmental standards. Energy-efficient lighting, water recycling, and local sourcing are being prioritized. Factories powered partially or fully by solar energy are being designed. These efforts ensure the product life cycle stays. Aligned with the mission, the commitment extends into logistics. Shipping components via electric rail or low-emission freight is under consideration. Every link in the supply chain is being reevaluated through a sustainability lens. Maxwell's approach is not just to build green vehicles, but green systems. Green thinking must permeate design, distribution, deployment, and decommissioning. Nothing is left to chance. Even marketing campaigns avoid physical materials, focusing on digital outreach. Environmental branding is consistent, clean visuals, low-carbon storytelling, minimal packaging. The team understands that public perception is shaped by every environmental touchpoint. Sustainability isn't a slogan. It's a system. Every decision feeds back into the mission. There are still roadblocks ahead. Some regions remain skeptical of new tech, especially if foreign-made. That's why Maxwell is committed to local manufacturing partnerships. Building in Africa means reducing emissions from shipping while boosting local economies. It also anchors the technology in cultural context, ensuring better community buy-in. When citizens feel ownership, environmental care becomes collective. This sense of shared responsibility is powerful. It moves the conversation from innovation to transformation, from adoption to co-creation. And in that shift, environmental stewardship becomes a social norm. The environmental story of Maxwell's bus is still being written, but the chapters so far show a remarkable commitment to balance, responsibility, and action. It's not just about reducing emissions, it's about reimagining what a bus can be. It's a mobile classroom, a solar node, a cultural bridge. It's a prototype for ecological hope in motion. Maxwell once said, The future is not something we wait for, it's something we build. And this bus is a rolling blueprint of that future. It's a vehicle of change, not just in transit, but in thought, policy, and environment. Africa's roads may never look the same again. Neither will its skies. Cleaner, quieter, and clearer. With each route electrified by vision and sunlight. This is what sustainable mobility should look like. Rooted in necessity, powered by innovation, and aimed at collective well-being. Because transportation is not just about movement. It's about where we're going as a planet. And Maxwell's bus is helping steer us there. Responsibly, renewably, and resolutely. This is not a dream, it's happening. And it's only the beginning.